The upcoming U.S. elections have sparked intense interest in the economic policies of Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, particularly regarding their impact on Africa. Now, as the African continental free trade area is set to cover all 55 African countries with a combined gross domestic product of about $2.2 trillion, the next U.S. administration's stance on trade and investments will be crucial, including the African Growth and Opportunity Act. Now, as the U.S. election unfolds and African leaders watch closely, will Trump's America-centric approach prevail or will Harris's emphasis on international partnerships and sustainable development take center stage? The outcome will have far-reaching implications for Africa's economic growth and global influence. Uh, this morning, Laurie Laird, a world affairs commentator, joins me to talk more about this. Thank you so much, Laurie, for joining us on the show. Okay, okay so uh, first, uh, how do Trump's and Harris's campaign funding strategies that you've seen so far, particularly uh, individual donations now, uh, the PACs and personal wealth, how do you think all of these will influence their policies and decisions in terms of how it would affect Africa? Look, I, neither of these candidates is a free trader. Neither of these candidates has an economic outlook that, that goes you know, very far beyond America's shores. Now, it looks at the moment like uh, Donald Trump has a much more clear path to victory. In fact, he's already already done a victory speech. The, uh, there's no official uh, proclamation of the winner yet, but it's very difficult to see Kamala Harris uh, coming back from the deficit that she is in. Donald Trump is only four electoral votes away from winning the election. So I think it's, it's safe at this point to talk about an economic policy under Donald Donald Trump. So as I mentioned, Donald mm. Trump, not a free trader, not at all. In fact, he has talked about tariffs. He's bragged about being tariff man. Now, this isn't, uh, this will be less of a problem for some of the African nations than it will be for, say, European nations, or in fact, China. Donald Trump has said, talked about, learned the idea of about a 20% tariff on all goods coming into the U.S. That could be up to 60% or more on goods coming into China. Now, there is no economist in the world that thinks that this is a good idea. It's not as if these tariffs are collected by the American government as these goods hit American shores. These, this, and this is essentially a tax on consumers. Importers pay more for these goods than have tariffs slapped on them. They tend to put those, uh, tend to put those, pass those price increases onto consumers. Now, that is more than likely to be inflationary if that comes to pass. Interest rates will not fall as quickly as they might have in a less inflationary environment. And this is the first piece of bad news for Africa, particularly African nations that are borrowing in dollars. That means the interest rate that they pay on that dollar-denominated debt is not going to come down anytime soon. And this should be a big concern. We're looking at so many African countries whose revenues are barely covering their interest, uh, their debt, uh, their debt interest payments. So this will be the first effect of a Donald Trump presidency. And in fact, interest rates in the U.S. have uh, at least market interest rates on the uh, on bonds. This is how America borrows from the international markets. Those rates have gone up in very early trading, and that again will prevent any kind of reduction in interest rates that Africa can borrowers pay on their debts. Mm -hmm. So, but then, uh, is there a difference between how um, Joe Biden has approached uh, or actually, you know, presented its tax administration or tax regime as regards how it affects Africa? Because it seems as though we are playing up um, this narrative as regards dollar-denominated loans to African countries. But then if Trump or Harris comes into power, it's more or less going to be like a sustenance of this particular administration. Well, certainly, uh, Harris, and I, and I don't see a path to power for her, probably would have continued Joe Biden's policies. Now, Joe Biden never took off tariffs that Donald Trump put onto various imports in his first term. Uh, that doesn't look like Harris would, would care to touch those. But I think one of the things to worry about, certainly Joe Biden and, and Kamala Harris, had she been elected, are much more uh, willing to work with multilateral organizations like the World Bank, like the International Monetary Fund. Donald Trump has made it clear that he has 
absolutely no taste for multilateral institutions. And I think one of the things that we're seeing in African countries right now is a need to have some of this onerous debt, debt that, you know, the interest on that debt is preventing African countries from investing in healthcare, from investing in education. And a lot of this debt has got to the point where it has to be rescheduled in some way, a restructured, canceled, it, it, for some for some nations to ensure that African nations can put money into development. Now you have to have an organization like the International Monetary Fund, who is which is a big lender to African countries. This has to be in the center of any restructuring agreement. The U.S. is the biggest shareholder in the International Monetary Fund, and I cannot see that this is an organization that a Trump administration would put any sort of attention into. You know, Donald Trump makes a big show of everybody's everybody's ripping America off, and to see any sort of American-led effort under a Trump administration to help African nations get to grip with this debt, I think that's pretty unlikely. Yeah, but what about um, Harris? She has actually, you know, spoken extensively uh, around grassroots uh, funding. Is that going to also shape any narrative looking at um, U.S.'s relationship with Africa in terms of policies and funds that also come to? I think it's so unlikely to see a Harris victory at this point uh, that I think we have to start thinking about what Trump economic policy would look like. And we've seen worldwide markets uh, starting to trade. Uh, the dollar is much higher at the moment. That's not really a dollar move, but this is this is in response to a likely Trump victory. Um, what that really has more to do with is weakness in other currencies that the trade with the U.S. currency um, from countries that Donald Trump has tried to threaten with tariffs. So the markets right now are reacting as if there has been a Trump victory. And I don't think that, um, I think we can move on from talking about a Harris policy and think about what a Trump policy would look like. And I think one of the things that will be interesting is if he tries to change America's relationship with the International Monetary Fund, does he want to withdraw funding? Does he want to decrease funding? That's something he's threatened to do. He threatened to do in his first term. If he does does that, what happens next? Is there a scope for China to increase increase its contributions to the IMF and therefore have more of a say in how policy is, is made and lending policy to developing countries? I think America's relationship with the IMF can certainly change in the, in the event of a, a likely Trump victory. Mm. Okay, so let's let's put this in perspective in terms of um, what Harris might be bringing to the table and what Trump is also bringing to the table. I know you've spoken uh, uh, you've spoken about that, you know, uh, while you were talking. But then I'd like to understand the initiatives that Harris is proposing to actually enhance trade and investments between U.S. and Africa. Um, Trump has talked about uh, tax cuts. He has talked about deregulation. Uh, Harris has talked about economic growth. But then it's been on the surface in terms of a campaign strategy and how that would actually favor Africa. So if we were to place both on the table, uh, which would you say or which would you play up more do you th uh, and you think that would actually benefit Africa more? I have to say that I don't think, and this is this is a difficult thing to say, but both Harris and Trump are focused primarily on the domestic economy, trade with with. with uh, countries that are closer to trade with, with Europe does not seem to be a priority. And I think Africa will be even further down the list, uh, whoever the victor is. Both of these candidates are, are looking inwardly. Uh, Harris hasn't talked a great deal about policy. Where she has, she seemed a little bit out of her depth. Trump has talked a lot about international policy, which is just charged tariffs, just put tariffs on anything that comes into the country. Uh, the thinking about how these policies may affect Africa, may affect the developing world, I haven't seen any real joined up or coherent thinking on that. Hmm. Well, so if you are saying right now that um, if uh, U.S. is going to be, you know, having this kind of trade with Africa as it would have with um, other world powers, but then it 
Africa is on a very low list. Uh, of course, we're talking about Africa here. Is this something that it can bring to the table to make it be at par with the U.S. when it comes to uh, economic ties, commerce, trade, and how it would benefit? And we were talking about um, AFC, FTA a while ago, uh, before the commencement of the show. We're talking about Agoa too, and what benefits Africa can get from it. So we're placing all the cards on the table for Africa. How can it up its ante? when it comes to the benefits that should come to it when, uh, of course, these conversations begin to shipping up? Well, I think one of the things that the Trump administration will look for is to make sure that the flow of, of oil keeps going. You know, Africa is still primarily exporting natural resources, some of which America needs, some of which the rest of the world needs. Now, something that's interesting is looking at uh, on the threat of a Trump victory or the, the possibility of a Trump victory, we've seen shares in, nat in renewal com renewable companies that have started trading this morning absolutely plummet. Orsted, which is a Danish renewable company, uh, down 14% in, in trading in Copenhagen. And, and where I'm going with this is, is a lot of the resources that companies were looking to Africa for, uh, things that go into renewable energy, things like copper, things like lithium, this will be less of a priority for a Trump administration uh, than it would have been for a Harris administration, which would have been uh, looking more or to, uh, to secure those sorts of minerals that aid in the green transformation. Donald Trump has been very clear that he wants to see a lot more oil drilling. He wants to see a lot of that happen in America. And over the past year or so, America has been hitting record highs in oil production. So America will always want African crude oil to continue to supply world markets. That keeps the price of crude oil down. But with America producing 13 million barrels a day, more than Saudi Arabia, uh, that is less of a priority for the next administration than it would have been for an administration eight or, eight or 10 or 12 years ago. So are you saying that um, Harris's focus on sustainable development, energy, climate resilience, alignment and all that will actually benefit African countries more than Trump if he comes into power? Certainly, it would create more of a demand for some of those natural resources uh, that are so plentiful in Africa and that do are needed for the green transition. But again, Harris's chance uh, of securing victory here are, 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 are almost nil. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see a declaration on, on, the, on the winner of the presidency while we're on air. So I think that we really need to start thinking about what a Trump presidency would look like, and certainly there would be a great priority put on renewable energy in the U.S. under a Trump presidency. Hmm. Uh, okay, so let's quickly touch down on um, the tax policies of both uh, Trump and Harris. We've said it in passing, uh, particularly regarding corporate taxes, uh, tax rates, and um, individual income tax rates. Uh, how do you view it? Well, I mean, there is an indirect effect that will certainly, uh, certainly in, in, in impact on Africa. Now, the, Donald Trump has talked about lower taxes, and that, by definition, implies more borrowing for the U.S. Now, the U.S. budget deficit is at about 7% of national income. That's and, you know, to see that sort of a deficit outside of war or outside of a deep recession is very unusual. And the U.S. economy is, you know, is sort of, you know, coming along at two, three percent growth. There's, it's very unusual to see that much borrowing. Now, when a country borrows, the more it borrows, the higher the interest rate it pays on its borrowing. Right? The more debt that you take on, the less credit worthy you become. And that ties back into interest rates. Interest rates on U.S. government bonds will rise because there'll be a greater supply of them. And that will impact, again, we mentioned this at the start of our conversation, this will impact all African governments that are borrowing in dollars. And, and this is something to be very, very worried about. Again, we are seeing a number of African countries that are trying to renegotiate their debt in a higher interest rate environment, servicing that debt becomes so much more expensive and it takes away from the, the government investment that many African countries need in healthcare, in education. So this will be an indirect effect on Africa, but it will, have, it will be an immediate 
indirect effects. So would this mean that, of course, for Africa, it can always look at other um, sources, other international sources um, for, uh, you know, borrowings if uh, the interest rates coming from Afri uh, from uh, U.S. towards Africa will be on a high side? Well, I mean, the, when, when I talk about this dollar-denominated debt, this applies to debt that African countries have already taken on. As for new borrowing, it's an interesting question because we have seen that China, which was a, a, a steady source of borrowing for many African countries, is feeling a little less generous than it has done because the, the Chinese economy is, is, is struggling a bit. A very, very high, a, a, a huge property slump that is hanging over the Chinese economy. And we're certainly seeing signs that China is feeling less generous than it was. Uh, but that, that really concerns new lending. And I think one of the big problems, one of the big worries that African treasuries should have is the debt that's already outstanding and the fact that the interest rate, the, the, the rate uh, the amount of money going out of government coffers to service that debt is becoming onerous. Mm -hmm. So how is the um, African community, you know, um, feeling as regards this in terms of their votes, in terms of how um, the businesses are being affected, most especially the Africans that are being represented uh, in U.S., representing other African countries in the U.S.? So when we look at the business, how are they feeling as regards uh, who would win the election? Well, I'm based here in London, right, which is the, where I look at sort of global markets. Um, it, I think there were a surprising number of African, according to, to pollsters, a surprising number of African-American individual voters that decided to vote for Trump. And we'll, we'll get more granular detail on, on who voted in what way, what demographic groups voted in what way, um, you know, over, over the hours to come. Uh, but I think business, whether it, it, it's African-oriented or, or oriented toward other parts of the world, business says that they like Trump. And I think they're eyeing the possibility of lower taxes. Lower taxes certainly improves the profitability of any company, whether it's trading with Europe or whether it's trading with Africa. So I think we're, it looks like U.S. stock markets are likely to rally. We're looking at maybe a, a gain of about 2% on the main indices when they start trading later this afternoon. So big business has has made its deal with Trump, uh, and, and so they're looking at these tax cuts. But I think an inflationary environment that may ensue if Donald Trump does carry out his threat to put tariffs on things. And some of his aides had said, look, this is, he, he may not put these heavy tariffs on, on, on various goods. He, um, this may be an opening gambit for when he sits down to negotiate with countries. Uh, but it's difficult to tell. You know, I think that at this point, we have to take Donald Trump out of his word, and we have to, to assume that there will be some tariffs, and that they could be inflationary, and that, that, that those inflationary inflationary effects, the way they will push up U.S. interest rates, will be felt all around the world, and particularly with, in, in countries that are the highest borrowers. Mm, okay. Uh, Laurie Laird, a world affairs commentator, thank you so much for sharing your uh, profound thoughts with us on the show. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm.